Hello, in this video we're going to be learning about how to make geographic maps. And so I've played with a number of different uh, mapping tools that you can install with Python. And uh, my favorite is called GeoPandas. And, and I like it for a few reasons. It's pretty easy to get started. Um, and it's uh, very similar to um, just regular Pandas. So hopefully it feels a little bit familiar. Um, here I have a gallery of examples and I can uh, look at some different ones here. Uh, for example, there's a map of South America. We'll be making something like that today. Um, another tool that people often find um, and, and they kind of gravitate towards is called Folium. And uh, Folium isn't my favorite tool. And one of the reasons why is that um, whenever you view a map, it's fetching resources from online. So there's some sort of web service. And, and so actually the way this is right now is on the bottom, I have all of these different um, all of these different uh, web requests. And if I refresh this page to see this map, um, you can see that it's doing all of these different web requests. It wouldn't work if you were offline. Um, it will break eventually if these web services go away. Um, you can see even as I'm scrolling around on the map, uh, it's going to trigger um, more, uh, more fetches. So even though the folio maps tend to look pretty sharp, um, I would steer clear of them. In general, you want to have your work uh, be built in a way that it's going to last for, I don't know, 100 years, right? And if you use GeoPandas and put your um, uh, maps in, a, say, a PDF, well, that's going to be a long, around for a long time. This Folium stuff, uh, maybe not so much. Um, the other thing I don't really like about interactive maps is it puts the burden on the audience to look for what is important. Generally, as a data scientist, you spend a lot of time looking at all the data, and you know what the most important lessons are. And it's better to just show those directly um, uh, and, and statically rather than having somebody stroll around. So anyway, that's why I'm going to be teaching uh, GeoPandas over Folium this semester. Um, and so let me head over here uh, to, um, to my notebook here. And uh, for these examples, I've already done some installs. I did pip3 install. Um, I installed GeoPandas. And then these two other things I need, Shapely um, and Descartes. Uh, later on, there's going to be some other stuff we have to install for a particular example, but uh, this is enough to get started. And so let's import it. So uh, I'll say import pandas as pd, and then I'm going to import geopandas. And uh, inside of geopandas, if that's trying to have a slow import there, you can see it's still running. There we go. Inside geopandas, we have all of these um, data sets. And uh, and eventually we're going to learn how to download our own data sets from the web, but there, there are a bunch that are already there. And I can say things like this. I could say git path to natural earth low resolution. That's the name of one of the data sets. And uh, natural earth. Okay, earth. Sorry. There we go. And, um, and so it's giving me a file path on my computer uh, that goes to this natural earth low res dot shp that that's what we call a shape file we're going to be learning more about shape files and uh, it's that's a file i could uh, load in if i wanted to let me let me take a peek inside of this um this directory here and see what other uh things we might have um if i import os and then i say os dot list dir um, i can paste that directory that data sets directory i copied and I can see we have a couple different uh, uh, directories here that work as examples. I have this one and also these cities. And so maybe let me just capture these. I'm going to call this um, the world path. That's the map of the whole world. And then I have these cities uh, also there. And so I'm just going to say this, copy this thing. Like so. What is that? That's natural earth cities. Maybe just let me peek at that. And you can see that's another one of these um, uh, shape files. Well, one other thing that I may point out here um, is that you can see that this refers to uh, a directory. So that's the name of the data set. The, the name of the data set refers to a directory inside of data sets. And, uh, and it contains this sh shape file, actually. And so if I actually peek inside of the directory that contains the shape file, I am going to see this. There's actually a bunch of stuff there. I have my shape file, uh, but all of these other things as well. And so often shape files have a bunch of um, kind of helper files that are accompanying them. And so when you're grabbing your own shape files, and we'll talk more about that later, um, you'll often have some sort of zip that will have all these things and you want to grab all of it and then extract it to some directory. 
Um, when people are talking about shape files, they actually probably mean a collection of files. Okay, so I have both of those things. And uh, so what I can do now is I can uh, load them. I can say uh, geopandas.read file. And uh, let me actually make this path. And I, can, um, and I can read one of these paths. I can say, well, let's get the world path. Uh, not world wath. Okay, what's wrong there? Um, it has nothing called read file because checking my notes here, it has an underscore in it. So I do that and I get this nice data frame back. And, uh, and maybe I'm just going to call this my world data frame. And then we're going to be analyzing this a bit. Um, what is the, maybe let me just like look at the head of it and I'll, I'll do some analysis in the, in the cell below. Maybe I want fewer rows just so I can fit more in. Okay. So if I take a look at the type of world DF, I can see that it's this new type. It's a geo data frame. Um, whenever I'm learning about a new type, uh, I want to think in, in kind of terms of object-oriented programming. I want to think, well, is this a subtype of something else? And so uh, I might want to look at this. I might want to look at the method, the method resolution order. Remember that one? Uh, method resolution order. And that's trying to tell me where this fits in as a hierarchy um, because the order in which I execute methods really depends on, well, what is what are the parents of this class? What are my grandparents on and so forth? And this is not quite how we do that. I'm just doing this to remind people. Um, method resolution order only works for a class. And so if I want to get the class that corresponds to this data frame object, I would do this. And I can see that um, if I call world data frame dot some method, it will first look in my actual class, the geo data frame. Growing up here, it's just a little more interesting. I see that we're actually inheriting from uh, from pandas dot data frame. And so, well, what does that mean? That means everything that you uh, have been able to do with data frames before, you can also do with a geo data frame plus whatever extra stuff we have here, right? So that's one of the reasons I like this, right? We're just kind of building on top of, um, of st standard data frames. Okay, and so uh, there's uh, some other types that we have to think about here. You can see that if I look at these different columns, a lot of these are just regular columns. I also have kind of this weird column over here, this geometry column. Um, every uh, every geo data frame has a geometry column. Sometimes the geometry column is named geometry. Uh, the geometry column could also be named something else. That would be totally fine. And uh, and so let, let's take a peek at that. So I'm going to say uh, world df, and I want to look at geometry. And I, I see it's a series. Let, let me look at the type of this thing. I'm going to say type of that column. And I see that it is a geo series. And, uh, and just like I wanted to look at the method resolution for a geo data frame, and I saw that it inherited from regular data frame, uh, here I could also say method resolution order. And I could see that a geo series is ultimately a, a special kind of series, right? And so everything we could do with Panda series, we could do here too, uh, plus a lot of other things. Okay. So let, let's take a little bit of a closer look at this column. And, uh, and I see that it contains a lot of these different um, objects, right? It contains multi-polygons, polygons. Um, let, let's take a peek at some of these. So I'm going to say dot i location zero. And, uh, and, and that kind of looks funny, doesn't it? Let, let me first look at the type of this thing. Uh, the type of this thing is a shapely object, right? So I have this multi-polygon type, which is part of the shapely uh, module. Eventually, where I import shapely and, and try to look at that a little bit more, right? Um, uh, Geo pandas is built on top of these shapely things. That's how it represents all these ge geographic shapes. And so when, I, when I'm doing this here, it's showing me what that shape is. And I, and I don't really know what country this is, but uh, those are two pieces of, of something. Um, I can look at some other ones here, like um, uh, that's more recognizable as a, as a country. There I have another one. Uh, maybe you, uh, maybe that one's pretty familiar. And uh, there we go, that's the United States, right? So I have all of these shapes, right? And, and let me just try to look at this again. Uh, that is a multi-polygon. And, 
And well, why is it a multi-polygon? Uh, in some of these other cases, like um, I think I had this one. What was that one? Uh, the type of that one is just a polygon because I can draw it with one line, right? If I want to draw that country, I just have one line bounding the shape. Something like the, the United States, right? I guess, uh, you know, we have one big shape here, right? But and that's kind of one polygon, but the shape really includes other um, separated parts, right? Like uh, Alaska is a separate part, uh, Hawaii is a separate part. And, and so really to uh, represent um, something like the United States as a shape, uh, it can't be a polygon, it actually has to be um, a, a multi-polygon. Okay, so, so I said we're gonna look at these shapely shapes a little bit more. And so let me, let me just look at the type of this uh, again, so that I can do my import right. Um, so I'm going to say this, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say import shapely dot geometry, uh, or maybe I'll say this, I'll say from shapely dot geometry import polygon. Is it like that? I think so. Uh, okay. And so now I can create these polygon objects. And, um, when I'm doing this, uh, what I'll have to pass in is a sequence of of of, of uh, coordinates, and, and this is kind of confusing how they specify it. I, I guess the example makes a little bit more sense down here. They're passing in a, a sequence of x y coordinates, which is a little bit different than how we've done with map uh, 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 matplotlib, right? With matplotlib, if I was trying to draw a line, so maybe you remember line two D, we would have something like this. We'd if I wanted to have a line with a bunch of points. I'd have like you know x one, x two, x three. And then I'd have separately the y coordinates. Uh, the coordinate, the way we specify coordinates here is a little bit different. I may have a list, and I may have like my x1, one, y1, one, and then x2, y2, and then x3, y3. That's how we're going to do it when we're creating these polygons. Right, so this is in, uh, it's in matplotlib, and this is in shapely. Okay, so let, let, let's try this. Um, maybe I will start off with just like two points. Uh, can I draw a line? I'm going to go from 0, 0, um, kind of diagonally up to the right to 1, 1. And uh, it doesn't like that because uh, I need to have at least three coordinates to have a shapely shape. So that's a little bit different here as well. And so let me try to go for a triangle. So, so I went up and to the right. Um, now let's go down and to the right. So, so I guess I'm kind of, my X is increasing zero, one, two, and then I'm going up and down. So zero for my Y, so I go zero, one, uh, zero, and, and there I get this nice little um, triangle, right? So I, I can do that. Let me, let me do another shape. Um, let's try to make like a diamond. So, um, if I want to make a diamond, I want to add another point right here, then I have to go down and to the left. So I, so I guess I'll go back to uh, x is zero and y is negative one. And, uh, and well, that was a little bit strange, wasn't it? Um, why did it do that? Oh, uh, I know why, because my x is drawing zero, one, two. This should go back to one, and now I get my nice little um, diamond there. So we're gonna do a little bit more with um, shapely shapes uh, in the future, but I'll just kind of set that aside for now. Um, let's do, uh, I want to get into some plotting here pretty soon. Well, one other thing I want to talk about though, is, is I was saying like with, I have these geo series, I can do everything I could do with a series, but there's other stuff. So let me give you an example of some other stuff I can do. Um, I have all of these, uh, uh, shapes and for each of them, I can get a centroid, uh, if I would like and be careful, right? This is a, an attribute not a method, right? So I don't have any uh, parentheses after that. Kind of strangely, all right? I would have, if I were designing this, I would have probably made it a method. And so now what it's doing is for each of those polygons, it's telling me, well, where is the center um, of each of those things? And so and the type of this as well is just, well, uh, another geo series, right? I can take the centroid of a series, of a geo series, and I get another uh, geo series. And so when I have these geo series, I can. Uh, uh, I can plot them. I can just say uh, geoseries.plot. Um, and there we go. I get a map. Or I, I could have said um, that was one of my examples. My other one is well, this is also a geoseries. I can plot that one as well. 
another Geo series. That's a centroid of all the different countries. And, uh, and so that's all well. Another thing I can do is that, um, I, I was telling you how like that every uh, data frame, uh, every, Every geo data frame has a geometry column, and um, it's often named geometry. Um, if I want to get it regardless of of its name, I can do that. So this would give me that geometry column, even if it had a different uh, different name. And so this is always a special um, column within a data frame. Um, if I wanted to, I could uh, set it as something else. So for example, um, I could do this. If I wanted to, I could say world df. Um, geometry two uh, equals the centroids, right? I could do that, and then let me take a peek at this. And so now you actually see I have these two different uh, geometry columns. I have my geometry one and my geometry two, and um, but which one is this? This is still going to be referring to the one it was before. It was this right here. So, so I look at that and uh, and it's that. And so if I do a dot plot on a data frame, then what it's really doing is uh, calling plot on the current uh, geometry uh, uh, geo series is what, what a plotting of a data frame does. And, um, and if I wanted to, I can change that, right? I mean, if I could come down here, I could say something like um, set the geometry column and I can make the geometry column uh, geometry two. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could, uh, by, by the way, this doesn't actually change my data frame. This is just making a new data frame um, where it has a different uh, geometry column, but I, but I could plot that and now I would get all those points in, instead. Okay, so let, let's try to, um, uh, actually make a map that is showing the centroids on top of all the countries. And so what I'll do is this. I'm going to say world uh, df dot plot back here. You notice I didn't have to change it back, right? Because this did not this did not modify my data frame object. It just created a new one that I used for plotting and then threw it away. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make the color uh, maybe like a nice light gray color. And, uh, and then if I want to do the world uh, df uh, uh, dot, well, let me get geometry dot centroid dot plot. Um, right now that's going to a separate one, but I can put that on top of the other one. I can say something like this. I can capture, uh, for here, I'm returning an AX object, so I can capture that. And then down here, I could say, well, I want to plot on top of that same area. And now I get this nice map. And, and maybe I'll make like these red and, and maybe the marker size uh, a little bit smaller, something like that maybe. And, and now I have this nice map where I can see the centroid on top of uh, on top of each of the of the countries. Okay, so that's all good. Um, what if we want to do uh, um, instead of this, I could also try to do like the cities, right? Uh, what I'm going to work towards is actually maybe a little bit of more of a complicated example than you might expect is how can I create a map of South America uh, with all the capitals um, on top of those? Okay, so uh, let's, um, oops, didn't want to do that. Sorry, I, I did it too soon. I need to change the cell type back to code. You see there's like markdown and, and, and code. What I was trying to do is I was trying to create, oh, and I did it again. Uh, I hit escape M, it changes the type. And uh, so that's code. Escape B is what I wanted to do, and then escape M. Yeah, okay, so South America uh, with capitals. That's what I want to do. How do I spell that? I'm not sure. Okay, so uh, when I go back to my world data frame, uh, I can filter it just like I would any other data frame. So I, I can filter it by continent, for example. So I could say um, continent uh, equal equals, um, let's say, uh, where is South America? Is, do I have any here? I guess I'll just type it. So South America, and, uh, and this is mostly false, but it's true wherever that's a continent. And so if I want to take this Boolean series and, uh, and send it into my uh, indexer here, then I'm just trying to get those rows for South America, and I'm going to capture those in a 
and a data frame. So let me do that. Okay, so that's good. And, uh, and let me plot that. I say sa dot plot. Uh, I, I guess just like that. And um, right now it's defaulting to making everything blue. Um, I could make all the countries another color. Uh, the other thing I could do is I could get um, some sort of like heat map. Like if I wanted to have have it based on the population, um, I could have one color, you know, for uh, kind of bigger population, another color for smaller population. And that's actually relatively straightforward. I can just say, uh, actually not color, I need to say what column I'm trying to plot. I could do that, and, and of course, you know, Brazil has a, 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 the largest population in South America, and so that's why it's that bright color. No real scale here, so I think what I should do is um, uh, say legend equals true, and, and now I actually get this, uh, this scale here on, on the right. And, um, and so what is that? I think that means that uh, Brazil has... Well, what is this? One to the six is a million, so one to the eight is uh, 100 million. So this is about 200 million people in Brazil, which is uh, kind of matches roughly my uh, intuition. And so that's good. So I have this nice map here. Um, what I want to do now is I want to draw the capitals on top of that map. Okay, so, so I'm going to capture this in an AX. And, uh, and, and remember, like, way back at the beginning, actually, did I even ever grab it? Um, way back at the beginning, I had pulled in my world data frame, and you know what else I want? I want to have a, I want to have a, like a city data frame. So I'm just going to paste that here. A uh, city data frame, right? So we're plotting points again, but it's not going to be the centroid. It's going to be well, what are the actual cities? And so I'm going to do that, and maybe just say like city df dot head. I need this down at the end. Well, oh, cities path, I guess. Um, okay, so cities data frame, cities data frame, cities path. And um, you see, I'm kind of going to be in trouble here already because this is a much simpler data frame. I don't actually have uh, details about what continent or even what country uh, these are in. I just have, well, I know the name of the city and I know where it is. Right, so, so kind of coming back to this example, sure, I could easily do this. I could say cities data frame dot plot ax equals ax and maybe i'll make those these nice red points um but uh the problem i may run into is well that's horrible right let me um uh maybe if i make them a little smaller i can at least see something um it, it's like well i'm plotting it for the whole world and i need to figure out some way to filter those down <clears throat> okay and so kind of backing up a step here right if i look at my city's df I don't really know, but if I look at my world DF, I do know the continent. Or if I look at SA, or I guess I've, maybe that's where I've already done my filtering down, I absolutely do know the continent. And, and so what I'm going to do here is called a spatial join. I want to figure out which cities overlap things in the geometry column of South America. And so I can say join. And, and then I can pass in two data frames, data frame one and data frame two. So this is a spatial join. And, and, and by the way, for this to work, um, you need yet another uh, package, which is can be installed with this. It can be like sudo apt install python3 dash rtree. Um, and, uh, and my comment here is don't use pip for this because um, uh, this archery thing that you actually have to install some other programs too that are, are besides Python. And uh, apt is very general. Apt is for all things on Ubuntu, Python or not. And so when I install it this way, it's going to both install the Python package that I need and the other programs, right? So that's going to give me everything I need. I've already done that. So this is just for you if you're following along. And, uh, and so now that I have this spatial join, I can take my two data frames and it's going to tell me, well, how do they overlap with each other? So I can look at my cities data frame and my South America data frame. And, and I get this really weird data frame that's kind of, well, literally joining them together. And, uh, and, and why is that weird? Well, uh, one of the reason it's weird is that both of them had a name column. And I see I have two name columns here. I have name left and name right. So, so name left was coming from cities DF. And yeah, sure, these all look like city names. And, uh, and name right was from the name column 
in South America. And of course, these are all country names. So, so I have all of that. But you know, the real important point is that I get my geometry, right? I get my geometry from CitiesDF, and I only have entries that uh, geographically overlap with my second shape, right? So, so maybe I may call this something like SA Cities, like this. And then now when I'm down here, instead of looking at all my cities, I can just plot my SA Cities. And, uh, and actually, let me crank that size up again now. Maybe I'll make it like eight. Uh, maybe even bigger, and uh, now I have this beautiful map of like, well, all there's all, there are all these different um, uh, cities in, in South America, and I'm overlaying that with the uh, with the population. Um, so often when you're making cool maps, you have to figure out, well, what are these different uh, uh, geo data frames I want to plot, and then how can I combine them um, in interesting ways? So I'll leave it off there.